Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who has too much hair. Uh, you know, I've been, um, I haven't, I think this is the longest I've gone without a haircut. Uh, you know, hair is, is weird. Um, and I haven't been able to get a haircut since March because although the, um, the uh, haircut place, the barbershop is open, I am very reluctant to head inside it for fear that, you know, I might get the virus. Uh, and spread it around at work and get other people sick, and that would be very unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to get anyone sick or accidentally kill anyone. Uh, and you know, yeah, I could very well cut this myself, but then I'd look really dumb. Uh, I'm not going anywhere anyway, so why does it matter if I look dumb? You know, these are the questions. Anyway, welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels throughout memories. Ooh. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about a book that I read. It's actually a novella. It's about memories and forgetting and a bunch of other things. Um, I am talking about In Every Morning, The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman. Uh, it's a pretty interesting book. Uh, it was recommended to me by a friend, and um, it was a good recommendation on their part. Uh, I um, I enjoyed it. It's very short, though. Uh, didn't expect it to be as short as it was, uh, but uh, it's it's pretty good. Um, and you know, ultimately, I'm going to recommend it to you out there uh, for you to enjoy. So that's good. For those that don't know, Frederick Bachman is a Swedish journalist, uh, columnist. He um, he's written a lot in in Sweden. Uh, he's a very new author in terms of, you know, um, years. He, I think he his first book was published in 2011. So, uh, you know, it, t past 10 years, fairly recent. Um, again, he's Swedish, so um, a lot of his books are Swedish, and then they've been translated into English. Uh, I think his first book was A Man Called Ove, uh, which I haven't heard anything, um, I, I haven't read, haven't really heard anything about, but and the title sounds familiar in some way, so I don't know where I've seen it before. Uh, maybe it's worth checking out. I, um, uh, I probably, probably will. Um, it, it seems interesting. Um, uh, and, uh, I like Frederick Bachman's writing, so I, I hope to get, to get more of that. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's talk about this interesting story. Uh, I will do a summary, a little analysis, and we'll move on from there. And every morning, the way home gets longer and longer, uh, it has a bit of a disjointed narrative. It takes place in the past, the present, and the, the future, uh, but it takes place sort of in the mind of, a, of an old man who is, is uh, losing his memory, uh, whose mind is deteriorating. Possibly, it's unexplained why, but possibly due to dementia or Alzheimer's. Those are the usual suspects in, in cases like this. Um, uh, very, very interesting. Um, uh, un and unfortunate, um, as is the, the reality. Um, it, and like this, so the story doesn't have any strict linear progression, uh, but rather memories and, and conversations that take place throughout the years uh, without any sense of, uh, of following, um, you know, again that progression and that that's you know that's how memory works when you're when you're uh when you're uh, when your brain is like fading like that uh you you don't really have a grasp on that that linear time and and sometimes you'll go back into the past and remember things and sometimes you'll you'll realize where you are and it's five minutes into the future and you're like how did that happen i'm i'm scared or something like that um yeah so it follows um three characters uh, it also talks about the, a fourth uh, there's Noah, a young child, who his grandfather calls him Noah Noah. Uh, he's a very curious child, very interested in math, but his teachers are forcing him to write, you know, papers and uh, and focus on words. Uh, and he loves his grandfather and is kind of scared of, of the fact that uh, he may be forgotten by his grandfather one day. Uh, there's also Ted, who is Noah's father, or Ted Ted, as Grandpa calls him. Uh, he's um, he's a bit distant from Noah. Um, he's a good father, but he's uh, he he maybe doesn't have the skills because you know his his father, Grandpa, was uh, a little bit distant from him, uh, uh, and he's also worried about. Uh, um, his grandfather kind of upset kind of angry because it's a it's a force he can't deal with you know you can't really you can't really fight alzheimer's like you could a, a common cold um and, and that that 
has a tendency to make one feel powerless and, and upset. Uh, and then there's also Grandpa, the main focus of the story, who is is going through this entire his uh, the latter end of his life, um, the back half of his life, uh, kind of losing his memory. Uh, he lost his um, wife, uh, and he he seemed to go through a big depression, um, and now he's remembering Noah, remembering Ted, remembering things out of sequence, and. Uh, uh, slowly but surely losing losing his ability to recall where he is and, and when he is. And so Grandpa is recalling these memories but forgetting forgetting what, where the present is or who he's even talking to at times. Uh, he has memories of his grandmother and he has conversations with her in his head where he, he talks about where Noah and Ted are in their lives and about the relationship that he had with the grandmother and how it was very good. Um, and there are some regrets, but he, he mostly revels in the, in the love that he felt for, for uh, grandmother. Uh, um, no, there are a, uh, there's a moment between Noah and Ted where um, they kind of acknowledge that their relationship wasn't as strong as it could be, uh, but there's still love there. Um, um, in, there's a lot of influences of Grandpa as the words and things he did in his life were passed down to Ted, uh, and he says that to Noah, and Noah will probably also say it to his children down the road. Uh, so Grandpa is a very positive influence in, in these people's lives. And then the end of the story uh, is just... Um, Grandpa sort of wakes up in a nursing home, uh, and he's uh, he's lost, uh, like he's disoriented, confused. He doesn't know where he's at. He doesn't know when he's at. But Noah is there by his side and, and uh, with his child in the future, uh, and he. Uh, he basically reminds Grandfather who he is and who Noah is and uh, what's what's going on. And um, uh, Grandpa feels a lot better about that. So it ends on a bit of a, a positive note. Um, but there is that, that sort of lingering, you know, how long, how much more is Grandpa going to forget? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit... It's a bit scary, um, but it, it's still, you know, positive. So in terms of analysis, this book is really interesting. It's a it's a very short story, uh, but it, I believe that Frederick Bachman uses every every bit of it that he can to tell a, a compelling story in, in, in an interesting way. Uh, one of the things that he touches upon is the fear of forgetting. Uh, for Grandpa, this fear exists uh, because he's worried about worried about forgetting about Noah. He's worried about forgetting about uh, uh, Ted, his son. Uh, his son. He's worried about forgetting about who he is, and he's worried about forgetting about Grandma. Uh, these people were all important figures in his life, and, and are still important figures in his life. And uh, with each passing day, he he he. he he might, he, it's likely that he's able to recall less and less of these people, and, and that's pretty scary, and it, and it, it makes you wonder if, like, uh, like, um, like, uh, if, if, if that means, like, also compared with, or paired with that, like, if you're forgetting them, like, you're forgetting their love, and so is the love even real anymore? Uh, Bachman briefly mentions that, and it's 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 a fascinating thing. Um, as I'm sure anybody who would go through this process of, of forgetting, uh, and people do this on a daily basis, like, it's it's scary, and it's a, it's a, it, it doesn't feel good. So there's a lot, of, a lot of fear there for the self, but there's also fear on the part of others. Noah fears that uh, his grandpa, you know, might forget him, but he also fears what the act of forgetting like how the effect that it'll happen on happen on the effect that it'll have on grandpa uh for for example he, he worries that you know that there might be pain associated with uh what, what's going on in his mind and uh, ted his father Ted notes that yeah that's it's probably the case that he is feeling some pain along with that uh, the pain might be more emotional than it is physical uh, but uh, that that emotional pain has a tendency to to, affect, to manifest itself physically too so it it's uh, it's painful um, uh, regardless uh, and it um, uh, it, it also manifests his anger too within Ted because he fears that he, he's losing his father uh, who, he, who he loves deeply um, but he um, but he, he's also very angry and he keeps himself at a distance to his to his father because he doesn't know how to how to deal with um, the fact that his father is losing his mind he can't intervene and fix this problem for his father and that's that's strong love right there to, to see a problem and want to fix it in any way you can for a loved one uh, and unfortunately he can't because with Alzheimer's and dementia, there's really no cure. There's a lot of, um, uh, uh, a lot of, um, uh, uh, solutions that people offer that, that fix some aspect of it, like marijuana or LSD or, uh, psychotropics. 
but those don't offer a, a permanent fix. Once once the, the the Alzheimer's or dementia juices get into your brain, it's it, it's kind of game over there, and that's that's unfortunate. Another interesting thing about uh, this story is again I noted that it, uh, the narrative was disjointed, and in that way I feel that it actually resembles memory loss. Uh, you know, uh, when you lose your memories, you can't recall exactly where you are, and sometimes you have a, a, a tendency to dwell in your brain and have conversations with people in the past. Uh, and so you're often in the past more so than you are in the present. But that doesn't mean that uh, you're necessarily, like, constantly in a state of forgetting. You're able to be in the present and 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 live live there for a period of time and, and sometimes it seems like there's no no forgetting going on at all. Um as evident by the story where uh, uh, uh the grandpa is able to have conversations with Ted and Noah in the present. Um but the forgetting does come and so the story feels disjointed as it as it uh rambles back and back in time and forward in time uh and um kind of you know confusing the reader uh, i was very confused at first before i realized exactly what was going on and uh i i really like how frederick bachman does that because it it doesn't feel like any story that i've read before uh in that regard the closest example i can think of is flowers for algernon which followed um the main character charlie his uh his progression from someone who had a great deal of mental retardation and couldn't write very well and couldn't um, uh, function very well as a member of society, uh, 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 as he goes from that to an experiment that um, increases his intelligence. Uh, and you see how, um, uh, in his own writing, because it's in, in journal form, uh, you see how um, uh, society kind of changes as he becomes more intelligent. And then he loses that intelligence and you change, see how things revert back and how, um, uh, how it affects the people in his life. Uh, very similar, um, d definitely about different topics, but uh, pretty awesome in, in, in both regards. And I, um, I like when, when, when stories attempt to do something like that and when they do it successfully and it doesn't come off as a, as a weird, weird gimmick. Another important theme in this story is the idea of the body versus the mind. Uh, uh, I believe that um, Grandpa notes in the story that uh, the um, the body is very persistent. It'll keep going. It'll keep chugging along, as uh, which is true. Like as long as you keep the the organs and the heart, you know, um, healthy and functioning, like you can replace those. <laughs> uh, like you can. Um, you can uh, you can keep going for a while. The the body uh, persists even through all trouble. However, the mind is nothing like that. The narrator notes that the mind is is very fragile. Uh, it's it's delicate. Like and we see that in real life. Like even the smallest chemical imbalance like like changes things. Like uh, you have enough serotonin, congratulations, you're happy. You 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 lack it, congratulations, you're chronically depressed for life. Um, that's that's a bit morbid, but uh, uh, you know. Uh, so the mind is is very fragile and like. Uh, um, I, I, I feel like that's similar to what um, what I read in Stoner in the past week, uh, where at the end of his life, um, uh, uh, William Stoner uh, by by John Williams notes that uh, uh, yeah, like he um, he has a, a tumor that that he gets operated on, uh, but it um, it, uh, it it uh, they aren't able to fully take care of it. Uh, and so he's uh, slowly withering away. And even he notes, like, uh, the mind is the first thing to go, um, but the body will persist because, you know, the body, like, even though we're living in delusion or hallucinations or something like that, the body is persistent, it's tough, it's it's sturdy. The human body is a, is a feat of nature. And so it'll, it'll keep going until uh, the mind can no longer really sustain it, and then, unfortunately, it's gone. Uh, I, I'd love to read to you a quote from this. When a brain fades, it takes a long time for the body to realize. The human body has a tremendous work ethic. It's a mathematical masterpiece. It'll keep working until the very last light. Our brains are the most boundless equation, and once humanity solves it, it'll be more powerful than we went to the moon. There's no greater mystery in the universe than a human. Do you remember what I told you about failing? The only time you failed is, is if you don't try once more. Uh, so yeah, uh, what I'm getting there is that, um, yeah, Grandpa pretty much knows, like, yeah, the, the human body uh, is, is great, it's it persists, it's, it's sturdy, and it, um, it can survive a lot of things. But the mind is not. <laughs> the mind is capable of failing. And so Grandpa is really noting, like, once we solve that problem of, of keeping the brain going for more than 70 years, 
uh, uh, it'll it'll set humanity forward like generations, and we'll be able to accomplish who knows what. Or maybe we'll just we'll just uh, um, we'll all just be immortal, and we'll be going to war with each other for for eternity. Um, that that would be pretty sad. But I like the optimism that Grandpa has. It's it's much better than uh, the pessimism that 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 uh, nest in my very soul. Um, and so I thought that was an interesting thing that Bachman uh, touched upon. Um, uh, that I've seen in a lot more literature, um, a lot of uh, a lot of people saying, you know, the body is willing, but the mind is 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 fragile. Yeah, I really love love the story. I'd say the only flaw is that sometimes it kind of reads like a fortune cookie. Um, I guess it's because Grandpa is at the end of his life; he uh, uh, he's passing on his wisdom. Uh, but it does tend to read like he has so much wisdom that it comes off like a fortune cookie. Like he's saying, "Oh, the the human mind is is capable of anything," or uh, "If if you want love, you got to work at it," or something like that. And so um, it, it really seems like. Below this, like Bachman is trying to pass on some wisdom he's gained in life, uh, and it feels a little like uh, the Grapes of Wrath, where uh, John Steinbeck had two things going on. He, he wanted to tell the story of the Jodes, and he also wanted to talk about socialism and how corporations are are not the friends of the common man. And um, I, I think that uh, um, uh, it would have been better if Steinbeck had you know separated the, the two. Um, so he could talk about both of them with, with adequate um, dedication. And uh, it does feel like that sometimes here where, where Bachman could have very, just, very easily just written a column where he wanted to talk about uh, the wisdom he's gained in life, but maybe not enough people would have listened to him. And I don't think it's a real problem here. It, it, do, it doesn't um, weigh down the story. It just, it just comes off a little obnoxious at times, a little, a little annoying. Um, like I... I, I get it, you have wisdom, Grandpa, let's, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, again, not, not a real big problem. And ultimately, I really enjoyed the story. I loved it. There's a, there's a lot to be gained from this, uh, from understanding what Grandpa is trying to say, uh, to, um, to the, the joy of reading a story like this in, in, the, in the format and structure that it was, it was written in. Uh, I think Bachman is, is very talented in that regard. So I'm going to recommend it to you out there. Go find it if you can. It, it'll, um, it, you could read it in like a, a very short afternoon, uh, and, uh, I, and you'll be richer for it, I'm sure. Um, uh, yeah, so if you have anything to say about what I just said, um, uh, if you read it before, you know, feel free to comment below. Let's have a discussion about this interesting book. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can get Frederick Bachman out to the masses and talk about more of his interesting books in the future, possibly. Um, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Around the Weird, uh, so that we can talk about uh, Twitter stuff uh, on the Twitters and uh, laugh at uh, weird stuff, too. Uh, and until then, I wish you the best of times in your weird and memory-ish travels. Farewell.